Salutations. Today we're here to talk about uncertainty in measurement. Take a moment, look at the goal, think about it, jot it down so that we can proceed to the next part. We're going to talk about measurements. We have been doing experiments. We are going to be doing uh, more uh, quantitative experiments and quantitatives, quantities, involve measurements. Me all measurements come from instruments. Instruments such as a graduated cylinder, a ruler, a um, measuring tape, a beaker, possibly. All measurements have a certain degree of uncertainty. They are not exactly the number that is given. If I say that I'm five feet, two inches tall, that doesn't mean I'm exactly five feet, two inches. There's a leeway in there that there can be some uncertainty in the measurement. Measurements are not infinitely precise. That's what we've been talking about. And what causes this? Well, they're not precise because instruments are not exactly always precise. Secondly, the experimenter, this guy over here on the right, um, may not be really doing uh, his measurements correctly or taking all the measurements correctly looks a little wild to me. But even if you try really, really hard, it, it may result in some error. So um, they're, they're never precise. Measurements involve estimation. So every measurement that you make will involve a little bit of estimation. The last digit will always be estimated. So we, I've already said the last digit is always an estimated number. You are going to take a measurement and you're going to be read between the lines that are part of the instrument where there are no lines and you're going to make an estimation of what number it would be. In your mind you're going to divide that section in tens, in ten parts, and say this is the number that I estimate it to be. That is what your uncertain digit will be. First of all, let's look at these two rulers. Which ruler would you rather use? Would you rather have uh, use A ruler or B ruler? Well, I hope you would choose A ruler if you're conducting an experiment. But let's focus on ruler B for a moment. Notice that these are centimeters, so one, two, three, four. For sure, I know that there are four point, and now I'm going to break this down in increments of 10 and estimate. My estimation is going to be 4.3. Now, this would be the certain number, I am sure of this. This would be the uncertain number. Since someone else could come along and say, wait a minute, Ms. Z, that's not 4.3, that's really 4.2. So they could say it's, it could be 4.2. Uh, and someone else might come along and say, no, 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 that looks to me like it's 4.4, definitely. So this could be one up one-tenth up or one-tenth one tenth up or one-tenth down. So I am going to represent, sometimes we represent the uncertainty like this. We would say plus or minus 0 0.1 centimeters. On the other hand, take a look at ruler A. Ruler A has more increments than this ruler, probably a more expensive ruler. If we look at 
the numbers here, the, the markings here, I might say that this ruler is 4.23. I can read that the nail is 4.3. And then for sure it's 3. I'm even closing one eye here so that I can estimate 1, 2, 3. And uh, it's somewhere in the middle, so I'm going to say it's 3, 5. These two numbers are certain, and this one is the uncertain number. Notice that this is a decimal point right here. How would I represent this? Well, basically I know that this could be 4.36 or 4.34. Because this number is estimated. It's up to me to decide what that estimation is. So therefore, I would represent this number plus or minus 0 0.01. Finally, there are a couple of things you need to remember. Errors that it result from uncertainty are called random errors. There are other errors call, called systematic errors, but for now, all you need to remember is that these errors that result from uncertainty are called random errors. Also, remember that counting numbers carry no errors, meaning if there are 20 students in this room, there's no possibility that there will be 20.5 students in the room. It's just not going to happen. All right. Take a moment. Finish your notes. And go ahead and write your summary and questions.